Greetings adventurers, I'm Lauren Gaming, and I'll be your guild advisor for this video. Three Star War Games is about to begin, or maybe it already has by the time you're watching this video. We will only be able to use three star characters and below, so it's time to dust off those three stars you've been neglecting, and to put bros like Rawl and Mord to good use. Now, before we get into what three stars I expect to see heavily used in war games, I want to give you guys a warning. If you are a relatively new player, you may not have a surplus supply of Falna, XP books, and Valis that a lot of the older players have. For the most part, you want to be saving those resources for 4-star characters. This 3-star war game is something I don't see coming back too often, so you're seriously hampering the development of your 4-star teams if you're using those resources on 3-stars that will most likely see the bench after this war game. I suggest to take a look of where your resources are, and maybe start with a 3-star team at level 60s in the special war game and then see how far you can go up the ladder before committing your resources. One other thing to keep in mind for these war games is because it's limited to 3-star characters, the damage output of teams isn't going to be quite as high as you're used to, so rounds should last longer, making buff skills attractive. With all that said, let's go over the adventurers I believe you'll be encountering the most. What you'll see making the core of 3-star teams are more than likely these AoE physical attackers. The one to keep your eye on is the 3-star Shakti that was a free event character from Grand Day Eve. The reason for this is that her moveset is very strong compared to other 3-star characters. She has a 50% strength buff to amplify her attacks, one of which is an AoE high physical attack with a temporary strength boost. That's a skill you normally see only on 4-star characters. The high modifier gives the attack a lot of base power, and a temporary strength boost with the attack is just the icing on the cake. This attack is going to hurt. I expect many players to be setting Shakti to buff for her war game AI. Next up, we have everyone's favorite goof, Mord. He has one of the highest base strength amounts for a 3-star character at 800, and you can amplify this with his 75% strength boost skill. Then, you can take advantage of his wide slash skill, a good hitting AoE physical attack. He does have a taunt skill available, but it's only single target, so we'll have to see how Mord performs in the games before settling on an AI setting but I think for at least a start, you're safe with setting him to buff. Next up, we have Berserker Tione, who is similar to Mord in function. She even has one more base strength in him. You'll want to use her 75% strength buff to increase her power, but keep in mind it reduces her physical resistance by 15%, and most of the adventures you'll encounter in the war games are physical. The strength buff will amplify her low power AoE attack that has a chance to taunt your enemies. Successfully taunting an enemy will limit them to only being able to select single target attacks that must be targeted towards the taunter. Since I expect Mord and Shakti to be AoE powerhouses, taunts should stop them in their tracks. In the case of Shakti, since she only has one actual attack skill, she'll default to using an auto attack or her non-attack skills. With Tione, either set her to buff to increase her damage output, or simply to AoE or ailment if you want her to simply just use her taunt. Tione is the first of characters that I have mentioned so far with access to a character weapon with a potential 30% crit. If you have character weapons for the respective characters, definitely use them. And don't forget, with the new update, we'll be able to rehammer, upgrade, and smelt your weapons and armor, so take advantage of the new blacksmith changes to gain the edge on your opponents. Our next adventurer is Eyes. She has a 50% strength buff with a small 5% physical resist buff. She'll mainly be using her buff and then attacking with her AoE low physical attack. I think you'll see more Shakti and Mord than Eyes at the top, but for players who don't have access to Shakti, Eyes will be an alternative who also has access to her own character weapon, with a potential 30% crit. Finally, we have Ryu, who I don't think will see much play, but I'm stubborn and since I love Ryu, I'm going to use her anyway. She has a 20% penetration buff which could be useful, since attacks that penetrate ignore enemy defense and are unguardable. After that, you'll probably be using her AoE low physical attack. Unfortunately, her character weapon is magic based, so you'll need to use one that increases physical damage. And that rounds up the AoE attackers. Let's move on to single target ones. Mostly, AoE is the way to go in war games, so you guarantee damage on all your opponent's units, since there's no telling which enemy your single target moves are going to hit with the battles being played out automatically. But sometimes, using single target attacks is good for your backliners to come in and finish the fight. Here are some notable single target attackers. 3 star Kino was only available from the Kino's Journey collaboration event, 
so that's some tough luck to those of you wanting to use her. She has access to a 50% strength buff, a mid attack that reduces physical resistance by 20%, and a high damaging single target move. Since Kino will most likely be used to clean up enemies when she comes from the back line, you may want to just set her to debuff or attack 1, so she starts attacking immediately. Better than waiting an extra turn for her to buff herself, we'll definitely need to experiment. And remember to use a character weapon cannon if you have it. Finn is also a good single target attacker, being able to buff your party with 20% crit. His single target move is rather good, being mid power with a temporary strength boost along with a high penetration rate. Either set him to buff or attack 1, depending whether or not you have characters with high crit due to character weapons. Remember he has his own character weapon, Fortia Spear. Lastly, we have Bell, who has a 50% strength and magic buff, but I'd stay away from using him because there's a chance his AI will use Firebolt, which is a magic attack which will not receive any benefit from the Hestia knife you'll be equipping to him. Now let's look at the two magic characters available. There's only two of them, Lafia and Philvis, with Philvis being locked to the event that was released at the launch of the game. For the most part, I don't believe they are worth putting into your teens, because you'll be wanting to be building your assist around a physical team comp, which Philvis and Lafia would conflict with. Philvis does have a physical resistance buff for the record though. Now, let's get into characters who can buff your party and debuff the enemy. The most notable character is Roll, who can buff your party's endurance and increase your guard rate. If you guys know about Casino Lady Shockley's prominence in war games, a big part of it is that guard rate buff. I have no doubt that Roll will be utilized well here too. Setting him to balance or buff should make him prioritize the buff and use his damaging single target attack afterwards. The next character is Gareth, who will probably see less play, but he has pretty high defense, so he'll last a long time in the fight and can provide a 10% physical resistance buff to your party. His AoE attack isn't too bad either. Don't forget his character weapon, Grand Axe. Next is Mikito, who I think will be very niche if used at all. But she has two different skills that can debuff enemy strength and agility. Since the majority of opponents will be using physical characters, the strength debuff will help immensely. The agility will make your characters more likely to go first in battle, and she'll use her low power AoE attack after her debuffs are active. And finally, we have two options for healers. If you want a more powerful heal and don't already have access to a physical resistance buff, Reveria is your healer. If you're worried about ailments like the taunt from Mord and Tione, or sleep from Dionysus or even poison, then you'll want to use Lily for her AoE ailment cure. Remember that both of these characters have character weapons that will increase the potency of their healing with added magic power. Now, let's get to the assist characters you'll most likely see. As I said before, most teens will be building physical, so here are assists that complement them. Legendary Artisan Nephestus reduces enemy physical resistance, increasing the damage output of your physical attackers. If you have Goddess of Purity Hestia, you want to equip her to your main attacker, most likely Shakti, Mord, Tione, or Eyes. At level 60, she gives a bonus 25% strength to the equipped character, 30% at plus 5. Mighty Elephant Ganesha will decrease enemy strength, good for reducing enemy damage when the meta will mostly be physical. If you got the 3 star Naza from the Spring Devotion event, she gives you a good amount of strength, but her main use will be her HP regen. This could give you the extra turn or two you need to outlive your opponent. For those of you without Naza, you can use the 3-star God Neighbor Miok instead, or the same HP regen buff. He gives a good amount of magic, so put him on a healer. If you find that your opponents are guarding a lot of attacks due to roll, consider using Scholar Aina, who reduces enemy guard rate. If the taunts from Mord and Tione are problematic, Mask God Ganesha will increase your taunt resistance or using Lily as your healer, remove the taunt with their ailment cure. Then we have Classy God Dionysus who can inflict sleep to your opponent's units. You may have seen him pop up in regular war games when he comes in from the back line to sleep your party members. Depending on the limit break, it's a 25 or 30% chance, but more than likely, he'll hit at least one person with it out of the four units on the field. If there is a large influx of Dionysus users and sleep becomes a problem, utilize either Fearless Smile Hermes for sleep resistance or Lily to use her ailment cure. Note that Lily obviously can't cure if she's sleeping, so if you're using her, consider using Inglorious Anklet with Sleep Resist on her. And that rounds up the assists we'll most likely see. Remember to keep track of the most used units and the top teams over the course of the wargame period to see how the meta is changing and switch out your characters accordingly. Don't forget about equipment, especially character weapons, 
and being able to now upgrade your weapons and armor with the new features. And like I said before, if you are a new player, don't be too pressured to use all your resources on 3 stars. This board game is a once in a blue moon thing, and probably won't appear again for quite some time. Good luck with war games. There's a lot more content to cover with this update, so expect some more uploads later. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. To stay updated on what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord for any questions and discussion. Continue enjoying your time adventuring in Arario and the Dungeon. This is Lauren Gaming, and I'm signing out.